Anthony Dansbury was arrested in 1991 and charged with snatching an elderly woman's purse and knocking her to the ground. The crime occurred in River Forest, Illinois, an affluent suburb of Chicago. Witnesses chased the man, but he got away. As he fled, however, he bumped into a moving car, touching it with his bare hands. The victim, who was critically injured, was rushed to a nearby hospital. The next day, a palm print was lifted from the car that the purse snatcher touched, and a composite sketch of the man, based on eyewitness descriptions, was published in a police bulletin and sent to police in neighboring towns. Several days later, police, acting on a purported anonymous tip, picked up Anthony for questioning. Even though he didn't resemble the sketch and had no criminal record, nor, it soon would be determined, was the palm print lifted from the car his. Anthony was 27 years old, but he couldn't read beyond a first grade level. On IQ tests, he scored in the intellectual disability range. During interrogation, according to Anthony, he insisted that he knew nothing about the crime, and the police seemed to accept that. He says they then told him he could go home after he signed some release papers. He readily signed the papers, which he could neither read nor understand. Those so-called release papers turned out to be a confession typed by the police. And instead of going home, Anthony was locked up. He has been behind bars ever since. Four months after Anthony's arrest, the victim died. At that point, Anthony was charged with murder in addition to armed robbery charges already pending. The Cook County State's Attorney's Office announced it would seek the death penalty. In May 1996, a jury found Anthony guilty but declined to impose a death sentence. The judge sentenced him to 75 years in prison. Anthony's conviction rested on two of the most common types of dubious evidence known to lead to wrongful convictions, a signed confession and the testimony of an eyewitness. In this case, both the confession and eyewitness identification were unreliable. Anthony Dansbury's claim that police told him he was only signing release papers is corroborated by his aunt. Well, on the day that Anthony was arrested, he called me and he told me he was at the police station. But he said, don't worry, because he had signed some release papers and he would be home soon. And that worried me because I knew he couldn't read. Four eyewitnesses to the crime viewed a lineup but only one of them identified Anthony. Eyewitness identification is unreliable in general, but especially so in this case. First, it was a cross-racial identification. The witness was a white woman. Second, she was the only witness who, prior to the lineup, had been shown a photo array containing Anthony's photograph. One of the other eyewitnesses who did not testify was Donald Walsh. Mr. Walsh is now deceased, but before he died, he said that when he told the police that the perpetrator was not in the lineup, one officer pointed to Anthony and asked, are you sure he's not the one? Another eyewitness said that when she tentatively identified someone other than Anthony in the lineup, the police told her that she had picked wrong. Anthony's appeals have been denied by the courts. He's serving a 75-year sentence. His only hope for justice lies with a petition for clemency brought by the Center on Wrongful Convictions. The petition awaits a decision by Illinois Governor Pat Quinn.